That said, we may follow some of the traditions that honor God, particularly those that were around and that Yeshua himself would have followed. So we're very likely to utilize prayers, for example, and follow traditions from the early first century and those we know to be even older. And some traditions that flow from scripture, like the talis or talit. So we're going to pick up now on the, the message of the talis. And, uh, and I know that over half of you, <laughs> well, you know, I wrote this thinking of our typical crowd, and, and I think there's actually more guys <laughs> today. And the people who had the questions two weeks ago, I guess they're all off somewhere doing something today. Well, it's no longer the majority, so whatever. Um, I know that over half of you are not a little anxious. There you go. Um, but I do want to address this issue next, okay? And that is women. <laughs> women in, with regards to the talis, the talit. Okay? So the first thing is to discuss. The first thing to discuss. Did God give the rabbis authority to change any of his commandments? No. No. I can, I can feel okay, quiet. thank you. <laughs> All right? Why? Then the Orthodox would say that the that the Talit is not today, would say today now, mind you, the Talit is not for women. Why? Why would they say that? Well, the change started small and it started with good intentions. Rabbis first said that women are exempt. Not that they couldn't wear a talis, not that they couldn't wear titi, but that they are exempt due to familial responsibilities, responsibilities in the family. You see, they say that the talis, they say that the tali must be worn at certain times of day, certain prayer times of day, that they must be worn. That's what they say. Okay? And they say that women might not be able to adhere to that schedule. So, they're exempt. That's what they say. That didn't mean women couldn't wear them. It just meant they didn't have to. That's how it started. Are you with me? Okay. It's how people work and how things change. Remember, what did God say? Do you remember the commandment the other week, right? There was, was there anything in there about men or women? No, he didn't say to the sons of Israel. Wasn't anything about that. Put a, a, cord, a winding or twisted cord of techalet, particular shade, on the four corner, on the fringes of, see it's wound into the fringes, on, of the four corners of the outer garment. A garment that was worn outside by like Bedouins to keep warm at night and this sort of thing, keep the sun off in the day. That outer garment, okay, there was nothing peculiar about men and women there. So, who declared that everyone must pray? This so is you saw where we went to. So, who is it that declared that we must pray at those specific times of day? And who said that they must wear a talit when they do? In any case, things change more over time. Garments with four corners on the fringes, uh, yeah, where the four in which the four fringes are, are hung, were not originally considered men's garb, but many rabbis declared it to be so long afterwards. And that was sort of a that's kind of a false foundation, though. We go back, and everyone wore this outer garment. Look at nomads today on their camels going through the desert. Are the women left without one? No. No. But with that false foundation that it's just men's garment, you know, uh, then they can claim Deuteronomy 
22.5 for support. And that forbids a woman from wearing men's clothing. So that's how erroneous theology is developed. You have a little scriptural backing, but your scriptural backing is for something that's not supposed to be there. You've invented something and hung something else on it. From one small error or one false claim, that is why I care so much about little errors. Doesn't mean if you have little errors in your theology that you're not welcome. Here you're welcome here. I love it. It doesn't mean I won't talk about those things. I love to talk about those things. I love to go through those things. I have no problem with that. You know, right time, right place, sometimes. You know, we don't want to get too far off tangent of the topic that we have. But I love it. Maybe I'll even do the whole next week on whatever the issue is, if you have something to talk about. I don't Maybe a few weeks. Who knows? Maybe somebody a couple weeks ago asked me about the topic. Maybe that's why we're here right now. Right? Okay. So... If you create sandy foundations for your theological house, what will happen? Fall down. It will fall down. Again, uh, their first change to the Torah on this topic said that a woman need not wear a tali. How is that different from a prohibition? Tell me. Um, it's basically saying that a woman doesn't need to because she's not required to accord to what the rabbis are saying. Yeah. And then it goes as far as to say she is prohibited because she's just simply not allowed. But if you go by Numbers 15, that's not even there. Right. And in that circumstance, in that context, context is king. In that context, everyone wore an outer garment. Also, this stance was not always held by all. In fact, we know of some women who did, in Talmudic and later times, wear them. Menachot, Menachot 43a speaks of Rabbi Judah the Prince. Rabbi Judah the Prince. As personally having attached fringes tzitzi, to his wife's apron. Did the rabbi not know? <laughs> was he confused? No. All right. Uh, but was he justified? So, so A, was he justified in giving her fringes? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a mixed audience here. So from the Bible, was he, was he right or wrong to give his wife fringes? He was correct. He was, was he doing it right? Where did it say he put that? On her apron. On her no. apron. <laughs> no. Now was it, is it evil to have them on the apron? No. But they're supposed to be somewhere else, right? You with me? Okay. So that goes along with what we said the other week. Is it wrong or evil to like have a talit katan or something as well as this? Or to have, you know, some people have the tzitzit, they have the fringes, they mix them in the belt loops, right? Is it wrong or evil to do that? No, no, no. But that's not what the command is. The command is very specific. You with me? All right. Modern conservative and reform Judaism. You know they both allow them now for women? It's really just talking about the Orthodox now. Remember the Sandy Foundation? What happens to theology built on the Sandy Foundation? What happens to a house that's built on the sand? So it's changing. It's changing. What about Messianic congregations? You know, from my experience, it depends where you go. That's what it really boils down to. It depends where you go. So what about me? What about us? Well, I like to see things, for me personally, I like to see things as clearly as possible from the biblical perspective. All right? So we can read all of those opinions and read all the cha uh, changes people made to the Torah. Uh, boy, uh, but... When we stand before God, we can't use the opinions of other people as a valid, as a valid defense. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 
So I don't want to argue that point. <laughs> right. He's the ultimate judge. Those rabbis will be quaking in fear on the side. They're, they're not going to judge you then. So God never commanded us to wear an outer garment, by the way, also. But it was something every person wore at the time. So where do you go with that? He didn't command every person must wear it. He said, put it on the four corners of the outer, outer garment, right? And everybody wore an outer garment with four corners. So now everybody doesn't always wear a garment with four corners. So what do you do with that? That's kind of up to you, isn't it? To some degree. But if you ever have a garment with four corners as your outer cloak, then you want to have them on there. Right? And they're meant as a reminder. So, And they do work as a reminder. God promised they would work as a reminder. There, that's also in the Bamidbar portion. So it doesn't hurt, it could all actually help to also have them, you know, on your belt loop and these things you see people do. Okay? All right. Next question. Are you a person? <laughs> it's not a trick question. No, not yet. So remember, the command is not to wear an outer garment with four corners at all times. The command says to have a winding techelet, string of techelet winding on the tassels, the tzitzit, of all four corners of your four-cornered outer garment. By the way, it doesn't say buy one with techelet. It says you are to put the techlet there. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. You are to put it there. Is that different? Mm -hmm. You mean you have to wind the blue point in there or you have to dye it? It means you have to make your own thing. Now it says you have to put put the techlet there. So you can you could yeah, you could buy the, you know, the string already died. Okay. But then the command says you are to put it there. You wind it. Not to buy one with it there. You know, you could, I mean, so, I don't know, theologically, you have to, you have to work that out for yourself. Could you, you know, massage your way through that, and, you know. But I'm telling you what the text says. The text says you are to put it there. Okay? You are to put it there. Techelet is that particular color which, like we talked about the other week, you don't see in most Orthodox because the snail disappeared for many hundreds of years. Well, it's back. Why do we still, still see white then? Tradition, tradition, <laughs> right? Which is why I started by talking about you know, there are, there are uh, traditions that say keep it white, but what did God say? There's wisdom in the Talmud, but, but there's also some other stuff. God said, put Techelet there. You with me? Now, I can teach you how, and you can buy Techelet separately. You can go on the web. Just Google Techelet. Techelet. Blue Techelet for Talith or something. You'll find them. If you don't, let me know. I'll find them for you if you want to do it. If you don't, that's, that's fine. I'll teach you how to do it. I could do it for you, but then what did I just do? <laughs> and then I just ruined it for you. You're to put it there. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Teach you the how many windings, how many knots, what kind of knots you're doing, and everything. It's not. It's really not that hard. It really is. It might look kind of difficult, but it's really pretty easy. Now, and opinions may differ here, but um, that does kind of imply. Could you say that maybe it implies that you have such a garment if you're if there's a command. And it's to command to everyone to put this on their outer garment. 
Does it kind of imply that you have the outer garment to put it on? In that culture, in that context, at that time, it sure did. Huh? Well, yeah, garment is clothes. This is a particular outer garment with four corners. That's the one we're talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm saying at the moment. Well, it is at the moment, but is it a four cornered outer garment? Scripture was very clear. We read it in the last message. If you don't remember, go back to the last message. It talked about the four-cornered outer garment is what we're talking about. Putting the, the tassels, the tzitzit, on the four corners of that four-cornered garment. You with me? Okay, in my humble opinion, it doesn't imply that you're necessarily to wear it continuously. This is for you to discern individually. See, if the scripture is silent, you've got to come up with your own. It's not for someone to demand of you things that are not written in the text. But I am to explain to you what is actually written in the text. Well, if you feel you need more reminding, and probably most people do, yeah. then you might want to put on your outer garment or, <laughs> or have those other reminders that God didn't command, but they're still good reminders. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be my, my logically working through it, but I'm not telling you to do that. Right? Because I don't have authority to add to God's Word. That's why. All right. You know, we're, if, where do we go from there? If, we're, if we choose not to wear them continually, well, we're also called in 1 Corinthians 10.32 to give no offense. And we're called in Romans 12.18 to live in peace as much as it is up to us. Okay, I put those up there? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Now, question. <laughs> okay, question. Does that negate our responsibilities to obey God? No. no. Okay, you with me? So while I might encourage you to wear them here, there are other congregations where wearing them may be deemed offensive or even erroneously deemed to be sinful. Like their men's clothing, remember? Where they worked to where they think it's men's clothing? Okay. So what's the best option if you are there? Just find a new place to uh, worship at. That's the best Maybe not option. stay there, James says. <laughs> okay, the, there are other options, right? So you have to reason that out. Ask the elder. Why are you there, though? I, I mean, are you making it your congregation? Are you visiting because a loved one died? Are you going to offend everybody? You know, by wearing a garment that you don't necessarily have to wear, just like to prove a point to them or something, to be abrasive, you know, or you can say, well, I'm there, you know, not required to wear for yeah, a garment. I mean, today I just don't do it. Said bloodshed. You see, I'm being kind of extreme. If it's going to cause unnecessary strife, yeah. you have to use judgment. It's not like they ask you to renounce Messiah yeah. or renounce all of the Torah. Yeah. See, well, listen. Go there if it was the, if it was the yeah, so listen, we have a, a story in Acts, right? After Yeshua left, where some a couple of his followers go to the temple and they start preaching at the temple. Sharing the good news. 
Now, yeah, we're supposed to share the good news. Parallel. Yeah, we're supposed to wear these. Did they necessarily have to do it at the temple at that time? Right? Do you necessarily have to wear this at particular time, particular place? Now, they were told, stop preaching in this guy's name. Right? <laughs> James has a point he wants very badly to share. I, it's almost fun watching him, though, so I don't know if I want to... Is there not, does not, does not our, our Messiah says there are weightier matters in the Torah that you should not neglect without, without neglecting the smaller ones? Without neglecting the smaller things, so yeah. So they were supposed to preach at the temple because... The uh, now you're making a leap. Uh, I was born to the Messiah, so we're not found in the Torah. And now you're making a leap, though. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to share Messiah, but that doesn't mean every instance. Every, if it did, not, I'm not saying every instance, your job I'm might la not last that too long on that cruise ship, ship if, you're, if what you do is go there and all you do is preach all day to everyone on the cruise ship. No, that's not, not you see what I'm saying? <laughs> now you don't... <laughs> Are you following me? Yes, okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean stop being who you are. Doesn't mean stop obeying God. But, the, you know, if you're not commanded to wear this all the time and you go to a particular place at a particular time where you're not commanded to wear it, then don't. Maybe you keep the peace. Maybe you keep the peace by not wearing it. Maybe you choose to wear it. Maybe you think people need to know this. My <laughs> rabbi said you better learn. I can't help you. I think we need to keep the peace if we can. If we can. As there's a the, that phrase is in there for a reason, as much as it is up to us. That's there for a reason. That means that God is trusting you to have sound judgment. Now that doesn't mean someone should be allowed to come into your house and see you wearing one and say, you know, you shouldn't be wearing that. Right? I mean, then you say, uh, let me show you numbers, chapter, <laughs> right? That's when maybe it's more appropriate there. This is my house. I follow the Bible here. Maybe you'd be some comfortable somewhere else. <laughs> you with me? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe you're even nicer than that and you don't wear it when they're around or something, but maybe you don't invite them back too. I don't know. You with me? It, it all depends on what they do and how they yeah. do They might be told to leave and not come back. Also consider, what if a Jewish Orthodox person visits us here? He came here. We had one. Mm -hmm. We had one. Yeah. Well, we may have had more than one. You don't know. And she accepted Messiah. Do you think she would have stayed? And she's a great example right now, uh, living somewhere else. In case somebody's listening, we don't want to broadcast that. She's a light in her community of other like-minded people right now, if you get my drift. <laughs> because of her coming to Messiah while she was in our midst. Would she? I don't know. And you have to balance. Would she have even stayed the first time she came if the women, if the study, then it was just a study group, were wearing tally throat? I don't know. Maybe she would. Maybe she wouldn't. You know, well, actually, she would have because you know what? I, Jack, I'm telling you, she would have. You know why? Because. Because Jason gave her a ride, she would have been able to. I was going to say, if women started wearing tally clothes, she would have been like, John, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. Yeah, well, that wasn't the only thing she said. But, but you know what she says now? What? You're doing it right. Yeah, John, tell John he's, well, he's doing it right. Okay. Uh... Would this cause them to leave? I, I don't know, but it opens. It also opens doors to conversations. It also opens doors for us to share about the Bible and about the lesson of usurping authority. So maybe it's a good thing if you wear it. 
If that's what your mentality is, if it's not about creating a disturbance, but it's about teaching, it's about sharing what the Bible actually says. Say, well, oh, I'm sorry, why did, exactly why does that offend you? Well, the Talmud says, well, what does the Bible say, though? Let me show you. <laughs> right? What does the Bible say? Because that's what we want to follow. We want to follow God, not men. So you can look at it that way. So it can open doors to conversations. And it, you know, and it may be the per it may depend for you upon the person that's visiting. If they're offended and they seem like a reasonable person, they seem like somebody that you could talk to, then maybe you go that route. But if they're just get more angry when you want to start talking to them, then maybe you want to take it off, right? I don't know. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what to do there. You've got to let the Spirit lead you in something like that. Does that make sense? What if a reef... Let me flip it. What if a reformed Jewish woman visits us and she's wearing one? Will she, will she feel out of place if she's the only one here wearing one? Maybe, maybe not. Well, she might figure, you know, it's those Mushuga, you know, Mushichi. <laughs> Yehudi, Mushichi people. What do they know? Right? Will she feel out of place? So that's a balance to consider. And we said, at home. What about at home? Of course. Of course. The Bible doesn't prohibit it. We've even got, a, you know, from the Talmud, a rabbi putting them on his wife's apron. Were you here yet? <laughs> okay. Not because he didn't know. He knew it was right. It shouldn't, it's not prohibited. Not by the Bible. Okay. Yeah, he just put it in the wrong place. He put it on her apron, right? <laughs> but it's still okay, though. Yeah, nothing wrong with it being on the apron. It's just that's not the command, though. That's not the command. If this makes you, if this makes you personally, if this makes you feel uncomfortable, then I really want to encourage you to search your heart and ask yourself why. Why does it make me feel uncomfortable? Are you with me? We can get really attached to traditions, really attached to certain cultures or something. And people can offend us if we go against the, a tradition. Even when, when by doing so, what they're trying to do is follow God. Now, in that situation, who's right? Who's right? Uh, I can quote scripture and tell you who's right. <laughs> okay. Here. That was rhetorical. <laughs> I assumed everyone knew this one. Uh, okay. So, look, if I missed any, if I missed something in the scriptures on this issue that you feel like, hey, John, I really think you missed something here. Uh, you know, it's possible. It's possible. Let me know. Could happen. Uh, if not, you might want to identify what it is that's bothering you and deal with it. Deal with it appropriately. If, on the other hand, you want one... <laughs> And you're wondering, where do I get one? Uh, well, there are a lot of places. You go to MessianicJewish.com. You could just Google Talit. And uh, you'll see a lot of different places. I'm going to say cost. Because I've heard it be like 1500 you could, no, you can get some really inexpensive ones, or you can get some really expensive ones. I mean, really inexpensive. Uh, the smaller they are, the less they're going to be. The material dictates a little bit. The colors. 
and the intricacy of the design are going to dictate but you can get them for well under a hundred like fifty dollars or less sometimes we've got some over here i think we got all four of those for like sixty dollars or something for four of them for visitors mm -hmm. yeah so you can find them very inexpensive or you know if you like you know to be stylish you can find some really nice ones too um, that's five dollars for two thousand dollars in that's all i got to say Say what? The first, that's $5, and the wife has $2,000 in it. I can't tell our future wife that if I'm buying expensive clothing constantly. <laughs> so I already know I'm going with the 60 to 25. <laughs> and let me throw something out here, too. When you start looking, if you're going to look, you're going to see all kinds of special ones made, made, for women, and they're not all from messianic sites that you're going to find made for women. What first? What does that tell you? Right? According to many Jewish people, it's all right to wear it out clearly, or they wouldn't be selling them. You're going to see pink ones. You're going to see multicolored fancy ones, and you're going to see very traditional blue and white ones. <laughs> so there look so in scripture there are legitimate you know gender issue things but this isn't really one of them not not by scripture there's nothing that says women are not supposed to or can't wear these as a matter of fact it says the opposite but it does deal with a specific piece of, of clothing. And that deals with the men as well. The same specific piece of clothing. Are you with me? Do you feel better about this? Do you feel like you know a little bit more about this? I hope. Somebody? All right. Am I wasting my time? All right. Uh, now I want to backtrack because I had questions regarding the outer garment. Um, when the outer garment was replaced by the tally. Because you know, Moses wasn't, his, his outer garment was, didn't look like this. You know that, right? <laughs> In the desert, this light little see through, you know, wouldn't help a whole lot. You know that, right? Oh, I know. But they did have this on the corner. Okay? Uh, so there's something else here. Uh, emergence of the talit. We'll go emergence of the talit. You had a question, someone? Somewhere? One or two? Oh. Uh, so emergence of the talit. It's true that fewer and fewer people were living as nomads as time went on, but it wasn't actually until the Middle Ages when being identified as a Jew was particularly dangerous that rabbis decreed notice I didn't say God came down and gave a revelation and someone wrote a new book to go into the no, when rabbis decreed it would be acceptable for the tali to be worn only in the synagogue it doesn't say you had to only wear in the synagogue but it would be acceptable if you only wore this in the synagogue that was the middle ages again, good, inta good intentions right? avoid persecution does anybody want persecution? You want to be per okay. So good intentions. But uh, who gave them authority to make such a decision? Nobody. 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 So if in the after the Middle Ages, after the decision was made, if you were outside wearing a four-cornered garment, maybe you are a nomad, maybe you're not, but you're wearing a four-cornered outer, outer garment, and you don't have this on there because the rabbi said it's okay not to. One day you'll stand before God. And what will he say? Oh, well, the rabbis told you, I guess it's all right. <laughs> How many people think that's what will happen? Okay, all right. Just saying. Uh, so in any case, you, you can picture an observant Jew from any period, any time period up to the Middle Ages is wearing some kind. See, that's, that tells us something too. Since that's when the decision was made, you can picture any observant Jew from the Middle Ages back in time as wearing some kind of outer garment resembling or being the prayer shawl pretty much all the time. 
So wherever you were, when the hour of prayer came, you would be ready and able to do it. You know, since it was associated with prayer by then. And before that, you know, association, you still had it with you all the time anyway. Why? Because what it's really meant to do is not be a prayer garment, but to be a reminder that it will help you remember God's commands and do them. It will actually help you do them. That's what the text says. I'm not making it. And it's not just the text like, well, Moses wrote that part or something. He didn't know. He's quoting God in that part. God is making that promise. You with me? Okay. Since then, a new garment arose on the scene. Why? Apparently, many people felt that this was not right, this thing about wearing it, you know, only in the synagogue. So they created a new garment because they wanted to wear the prayer shawl or whatever all the time. So a new garment was invented. Ready? Talit Katan, which we brought up before. What does Talit Katan mean? Anyone? Little talits. Yeah, small talit, little talit. I'm surprised the board didn't raise her hand. You know Katan. But okay. The Zach is awesome. Zach is awesome. So you got it. So, yeah. Talit Katan. Little talit or small. The talit Katan is a small version of the talit gadol. Who can tell me what? Talit large. Great. So, the great, talit. great talit or large talit. That's worn. Okay, so this version, this talit katan, is worn under or over the clothes throughout the day. You with? Did you hear what I said? It can be worn under or over the clothes throughout the day. Like the talit gadol, it, it can be made of wool or cotton with features and features the same fringes, seat seat sometimes white, sometimes tehillet, right, on the four corners of the garment. It's made to be a four-corner garment, but this time instead of wrapping around, you just got a hole in the middle, so you flip it over your head, right? Okay. This is predominantly worn by Orthodox Jews, but you can look in the back and see not, <laughs> but not 100%. Uh, but let's discuss it in, in relation to the commandment. Is there tehillet on the talit katan? If you put it there, yeah, you can buy some that way, and and uh, but does everyone wear it that way? Right. Same 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 things going on. Does yours? You have blue on yours, yes. You have tehillet. On your tali katan. Yeah. But not on the. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We're not concerned about that part yet. So some do and some don't. Same reason, tradition. And lastly, did God forbid this bar forbid this garment, this talit katan? No, he did not. No. But what if it's an outer garment which has four corners? and does not have the techalat again the ones who wear them white are you feel, uh, you know what if you're if people are wearing them and not changing it to techalat when the commandment says put techalat in the four corners of your outer garment and the reason for not obeying that command is tradition what are they doing that's disobedience thank you that's disobeying god You'd be better off not to wear it. I'm going to purposely wear a four-cornered outer garment and purposely not put the techelet, which I know is now available, on the corners? Come on. Come on. All right? Because of tradition? All right. And the commandment is you shall do that. 
It's not a suggestion. So if you wear one without techelet, you're in flagrant violation of the Torah and probably doing it in order to maintain a tradition. In effect, you're breaking God's laws in order to obey man. You see the problem? All right, slide. Here's the bottom line. Obey God, not men. Don't let anyone keep you back from obeying God. Are you with me? That's what matters. What slide am I supposed to be on? Or that you didn't tell me. There's a slide missing? Am I going farther than the motion? Yeah, you went the wrong direction. After Talit Katan, you go the other direction. Okay. Well, you didn't tell me the other two slides. You didn't say There you go. Ah. So you never saw the Talit Katan. Put the Talit Katan back. Well, they had Zach in the back, so. So there's a Talit Katan, and you can't even see the fringes on that one. Okay, and then flip to the last slide. So Zayan is smiling now. I said, last slide. <laughs> like, Yay! <laughs> and uh, all right, so here's the bottom line, which you already knew, right? Except more particularly in line with this commandment. The bottom line is, again, obey God and not men. Don't let anyone keep you back from obeying God. Are you with me? That's what matters. After all his failures in this life, the wisest man who walked this earth, decided, he decided to, right? You know who I'm talking about. The wisest man who walked this earth started experimenting with everything. Because wisdom comes not just from knowledge and data, but it comes from experience. So he started experiencing, you know, experimenting with everything and experiencing everything he'd possibly experience, and writing about it and writing what he learned. And at the end, and, and you know, when he started near the end, he started saying, "Everything's vanity. Everything's frustration. I can't get any enjoyment out of any of this stuff. Ah, it's just useless. What is? I mean." I tried everything. It's just like the wind. And he comes to the end. And what does he say at the end after he woke up from all his failures? He said, Obey God. This is the whole duty of man. And what did Yeshua say? <coughs> Excuse me. I should turn this off before I did that. <laughs> Yeshua said, I have come to abolish the Torah. No. Oh, no. he didn't say that. No. He said the Torah will be in effect until... No, no. it's still in effect. He wants us to obey the Torah. Are you sure? Yes. Ten. And I have a Christian background. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. Hmm. What about Shaul? Yes, he was in terms of Torah of observance. He was Roman. No, he was not a Roman. He was a Roman citizen. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, he, he was a Pharisee. He wasn't into that poor stuff. Yes, he was. Yes, he was into poor stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Pharisee. Mommy, 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 but to fill it full, to fill it full, to give its complete full meaning to us, to show us how it works, to live it out before our very eyes. Plerao in the Greek, to fill it full. You with me? He said, not the smallest letter, the yod, 
or the smallest piece of a letter would disappear from the Torah while there is a heaven and an earth. I would quiz you and ask you if there's a heaven and an earth, but I mean... Okay, so this is, this is still the duty of man. What was Yeshua's message when he came out of the wilderness? You remember he went into the wilderness and he, you know, to be tempted and he came back and that's where he began his message. What was his message? Repent. Do Teshuva, repent. What does repent mean? Turn from your sins to God. Turn from your sins to God. And how do we know what sins are? From the Torah. From the Torah. Yaakov, a.k.a. James, somehow, right? <laughs> Told us sin is lawlessness. Sin is being without the Torah. Sin is going against the Torah. The ter Torah defines what sin is. Romans, 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 Romans. 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 There you, you go. Quote Romans seven. Seven. You quote Romans 7. You quote Romans 7. Okay. What a wretched man I am who shall deliver you from this job. And then he goes in to say, the Shia Kishore, or in English translation, right? Okay, so did you get your answer today? <laughs> I did. <laughs> you weren't the only one. Did you, you all feel comfortable with this understanding, this knowledge? All right. You, you, you went from like an Obi Wan to like an old Obi Wan. <laughs> that's a that's a high compliment. Ah, okay. You're a Star Wars fan. And so that's our second message on the Talit. And, and uh, look, it's not five o'clock yet, and I'm done. <laughs> it's, it's not a record, but it's pretty good for me <laughs> to be done before five o'clock. So what is the, what's the point again? Let me hear you say, what was the message about? Obey God regardless of what man says. Yeah, so there was a context for the message, it's about the talit, but the point, and, and you know, and little things in there, like, right, watch what you're doing, what you're believing, what you're following. Are you, are you actually following the Bible and God, or are you following commandments of man? Be careful, be careful. All right, let's gather around for the blessing. No, after the blessing. <coughs> uh, we gather in a circle here. We're all family. No one stands together is the theme.
did not turn away. He put his countenance upon him. He is perfect, told us that peace is Shalom. Shalom Yeshua. Amen. Amen. I don't think we have to say thank you because uh, lately I've been concerned about a certain, I'm just going to put it bluntly, heresies rising in the message. Statement where you said I use African biblical text, but they are not considered scripture. Let me turn this off. Oh, I'm sorry. They did.